This podcast is a proud member of the Lamb Podcasting Network. Find the network at largeassmovieblogs.com. Hello and welcome to episode 47 of the 1001 Movies podcast, based on the book, A Thousand and One Movies You Must See Before You Die. This week, we'll be talking about Grave of the Fireflies, the 1988 anime drama directed by Aisao Takahata. As a boy of 10, Akiyuko Nosaka was uh, separated from his adopted family in Kobe, Japan, when the village was bombed during World War II. His adopted father perished, and his younger sister died of malnutrition. Nosaka secretly blamed himself for his sister's death, and in 1967 he wrote A Grave of Fireflies, a short story about a young brother and sister whose lives end with tragedy during the war. The story tells of young Seita, a junior in high school, and his four-year-old sister Setsuko, who are displaced from their Japanese village after it's firebombed. With their father away serving in the navy and their mother killed, they go to stay with an aunt whose obsession with caretaking for her own daughter and her insistence that Seita join the military forces him to leave the house with Setsuko and live in a nearby abandoned shelter. The story's preface has Seita succumbing to malnutrition in a Tokyo subway, his clothes soaked with dirt and diarrhea, clutching a small candy drops tin in which, when opened by a station employee after finding his dead body, reveals the remains of his cremated sister. Although the story was obviously meant to be autobiographical, Nosaka would state in his acceptance speech for the Naoki Prize for Japanese Literature in 1967 that, quote, Everything that went into the makeup of my person today can be found in the air raids, the war ruins, and the black market. He would later admit that he wrote the story as an apology to his own dead sister, which may be why Seta follows her in death, and perhaps why his own agony is much more graphic in the story's opening than that of Setsuko's near the conclusion. Just over 20 years after the publication of A Grave of Fireflies, Directors Hayao Miyazaki and Isaiya Takahata founded Studio Ghibli, which in later years would become the Japanese equivalent of Walt Disney Films. A couple years later, the opportunity to write and direct an animated film based on A Grave of Fireflies presented itself to Takahata, who was at first hesitant to take it. His friend and partner Miyazaki soon persuaded him to make the film, emphasizing that no other animated film like it had been made. Previously, animated movies were primarily for cheerful cartoons, like the popular Disney films. When he accepted the project, Takahata had plans for using it to showcase his own directorial style, but upon learning that he had a limited time to make the film, he was forced to use a more traditional style. Takahata empathized with the story and its author, as he and his sister ran away from home for two days during an air raid in the 1940s. Granted, their fates were resolved much more pleasantly than Seita's and Setsuko's, but this may have been the fact which inspired Takahata to finally write and direct Grave of the Fireflies. Nosaka's story is roughly 17 pages long in English, and Takahata's film is unflinchingly loyal to it, even presenting viewers with Seita's tragic death in the opening minutes along with the subtle message that Setsuko's fate will be similar. Whereas adult actors were often used to voice children's characters in animation, Takahata took a realist approach and insisted on hiring a five-year-old girl for the voice of Setsuko. Ironically, Grave of the Fireflies was released on a double billing by Studio Ghibli with My Neighbor Totoro, a more cheerful animated film, and Takahata found that audiences reacted differently to Grave of the Fireflies depending on whether that film was shown first or Totoro was. In theaters, which showed Totoro first, he noticed that viewers tended to leave during Grave of the Fireflies, no doubt finding the subject matter a little too heavy. This was, in Takahata's eyes, a sign of success. Although the film was a success in Japan, it took a relatively long time to become popular in America, and it probably wasn't until the year 2000, when Roger Ebert included Grave of the Fireflies in his Great Movies column, 
but American audiences really started taking notice of the film. Critical acclaim and an Academy Award for another Studio Ghibli film, Spirited Away, no doubt catalyzed the effect. In 2005, a made-for-television live-action movie was broadcast in Japan of A Grave of the Fireflies, although, interestingly, the filmmakers based it on the point of view of Seitas and Setsuko's cousin, the daughter of the aunt they stayed with for a short while. Three years later, another live-action version was released theatrically in Japan. In 2013, Takahata found himself nominated for an Academy Award for The Tale of the Princess Kaguya, Grave of the Fireflies likely remains, however, as his most popular film. As for Studio Ghibli, it closed its doors in 2014 after Miyazaki's retirement. Author Akiyuki Nasaka died in 2015, and his 1967 story will likely remain his epitaph for eternity. What did I think of Grave of the Fireflies? Can I just tell you to watch this? The fact that I've mentioned that the film's two leads dies doesn't exactly count as a spoiler since it's practically revealed in the first five minutes that Seita dies and Setsuko's death remains something of a foregone conclusion throughout the rest of the film. Even knowing this, however, the movie is an emotional gut punch, probably one of the saddest films I've ever seen, and for this it remains a close tie with another Japanese movie nobody knows from 2004. With later viewings, you can look at it as a masterpiece rather than an emotional experience, and one realizes the importance of why this works so well as an animated rather than a live-action film. As Ebert emphasized in his article, in a live-action film, it would have been all about the spectacle of a war film, perhaps walking away with the impression that the story is an anti-war one. Rather, with animation, the story becomes less about spectacle and more about grief and loss. Nosaka's story is written tightly, almost like a written documentary, although this may partly be a translation issue. While Takahata's film follows the story pretty much identically, he adds small moments and images that add up to a very human film. For instance, the can of fruit drops, the firefly show, the scene in which a group of privileged boys stumbles upon Seita's and Setsuka's camp, and, of course, the heart-tugging montage at the end to the tune of Home Sweet Home. Takahata was surprised that so many viewers empathized with Seita, as it's his stubborn refusal to return to the food and comfort of their aunt's home that eventually leads to his and his sister's demise. This is another element that comes across on later viewings. Seita seems as much as a victim as Setsuko, but upon reflection, we realize that it's not just his stubbornness, but his complete ignorance that leads to tragedy. Why doesn't he buy food with the money left to them by their mother? He does, but it's literally too late. After sucking on a small chunk of fresh watermelon he brings back, Setsuko slips into a coma and dies. I don't find myself sympathizing with him exactly, but mostly shaking my head at the sad fact that he doesn't know any better, and it's the mere ignorant perseverance of a teenage boy that lands them in their situation by the end of the film. Critical thinking aside, Grave of the Fireflies is a masterpiece and should be required viewing for anyone interested in the work produced by Studio Ghibli, or required viewing for anyone for that matter. I could see it being particularly strong with younger viewers. That's all I have to say about Grave of the Fireflies. Tune in next week when we discuss 1939's Stagecoach, directed by John Ford and starring John Wayne. In the meantime... Feel free to email me questions or comments at 1001moviespodcast at gmail.com. Follow me on Twitter at 1001moviespc and look for the podcast Facebook page. Until next time, happy viewing. <laughs>